Right, listen up, everyone. They've announced that the technical regulations are changing for next season. Now, there's a risk a lot of our hard work could be undone if we're not careful. So let's figure out how to mitigate this. Drivers, take a look at the developments we have and let us know what you want to invest in protecting. All right, everyone, let's get on top of this. Hey what's going on guys, it is Foxy98 here and welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today here on the channel. Today we're here with another episode of F1 2020 My Team Crew Mode here for season number two at the Japanese Grand Prix. And as you have just heard, we do have a regulation change on the way. And as you can quite clearly see, it's a big one. It's a massive regulation change with both the uh, powertrain and the chassis uh, being the main components uh, that are under threat. Which means <clears throat> I've got to save... Around about 30 different upgrades in total, um, which is, yeah, it's not a very good thing. But um, if you end up enjoying today's video, feel free to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here as well uh, as uh, we look to press onwards uh, with uh, the channel. Now, uh, first things first, I had saved up 2,500 resource points. So straight away, we're going through and we're just trying to save as much as we can. And straight off the bat, we've managed to go ahead and save 8 out of the 16 elements that we have actually bought for the chassis and the powertrain you can see there we've got 17 elements that we need to save so lots to do uh but already off to a brilliant start having those uh, resource points saved up is great for us i was always going to save them nonetheless anyway um but now we can really crack on with it also in today's episode as well we do actually have an opportunity to win the formula one world drivers championship in order for us to do that we just have to finish i believe it is I'm trying to get my maths right. I think Ricardo has got to win, uh, and then we have got to finish, like, P3, I think, or P4, something like that, to win the championship. Um, I believe we've got around about 100 and... I don't know what the gap to the championship is, to be honest. I actually can't remember. Um, so I'm not even going to bother trying to, remember, trying to guess. Um, but uh, pretty much we've got a very strong chance of winning. We've got over a 100-point lead in the championship. Uh, and um, obviously, if that gap... Uh, remains over 100 points by the end of today, uh, then we will have won the championship. But we're going to go to the Japanese Grand Prix now this weekend here at Suzuka. Uh, and what I found out straight off the bat is this is by far my weakest track on the game. Um, well, when I say on the game, I'm talking about versus the AIs because, short in short, I had absolutely no pace against them. So as we go towards the last corner now here, uh, this lap was pretty meh, I'm not going to lie. Um, it was all right. You can see the back end sliding there through there. And you see we get on the grass and just a bit shaky, a bit snappy with the car. Uh, already, you know, 1.7 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo. On my next flying lap, though, this felt slightly better. Um, but it really didn't compound that in raw pace. It was one of those ones where, like, I felt decently fast, but I had no pace. And, you know, across the start finish line, we gained 8 tenths of a second. We actually went purple uh, to the final sector. But... I mean, it says P19, that's a glitch. It was only P15. That's all I could manage. Even with a purple final sector, um, it meant nothing. I mean, obviously, the final sector was literally just 130R and a chicane. But, I mean, Hamilton set a 23.6. I only could manage a 25.0. And that was literally the best I felt I could get. I don't think I could get any more of that, of that. Verstappen there out in Q1, which is an absolute... Um, a nightmare for him, but um, it's towards Q2 now. Again, I set a bank lap on the used uh, soft compound tyres, uh, and um, I was a bit perplexed. So you can see, as we go through the middle sector, we're already six tenths down on Lance Stroll, and that's P12. So I'm not getting through into Q3, so I'm pretty much just trying to get as high as I can. Maybe, like, I don't even know. It's just weird. As we come towards the start finish line now here, we're going to come across the line, and we actually set a 25 1, which was about a tenth of a second shy of what I did in Q1, which goes to show that I really gave it everything, and I just don't have the pace, and it, it, it wasn't the set, I don't know what it was, it, it, the setup didn't feel weird, um, it, I can't really explain it, I mean, last season as well, we were really far off the pace, um, if I'd set my PB, I probably could have tried to have beat Giovinazzi, it would have been a, sh it would have been a long shot, but... Not very good. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, last season in uh, Japan, we were really, really poor. Um, but luckily, we got uh, helped by um, a safety car glitch, which allowed us to win that race. Um, whereas this time around, obviously, we're now pretty much getting a reality check that, you know, we're very, very quick. We've got the quickest car. We're dominant on virtually every single circuit. 
Um, but it, to me, uh, or personally for me, uh, Suzuka is definitely uh, my weakest circuit. So, we're going to have to go on some rec uh, recovery drive and just do what we can. Hamilton sets the uh, pole position at a 123.3. Even his lap in Q1 would have got in pole position. That's how dominant Hamilton was in qualifying. Shock horror, Hamilton got pole. I thought I should let you guys know that because he's had pole ever since he's joined with me. He's had a 100% pole scoring record. Um, as you can see, though, uh, we're down in P14, I believe. Someone took a grid penalty because we were in P15 earlier. Um, so it is going to be someone in the back here. It's Albon that takes that grid penalty uh, with also, um, I think it's Latifi there, uh, also taking a penalty. But we're going to start the race on the uh, soft compound side and go to the hards. The uh, game wants to be to start on the mediums and go to hards, but I would just have a disadvantage. So I would see absolutely no point in that. What I did try and do is see if I could potentially maybe do soft medium. And try that. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, if I can't make that work, I'll just box for the hard compound tyres and leave it at that. So let's get straight into it then. Here we go then for the start of the Japanese Grand Prix. What could potentially be the title winning race. And it's lights out. And where we go then to start the Japanese Grand Prix. A good start from my teammate Lewis Hamilton up front. It's going to be pretty much all on him today to try and take the race victory. Because I don't think I've got the pace to do it. As we go in towards the first quarter now. Going around the outside here of one of the racing points of um, Kevin Magnus. I believe his is on nice. Stroll actually. Uh, apologies on that one as we now go through in towards the X section. Stroll does get in front there. Get a little bit off shape uh, through there. Going onto the grass. Now the Alpha Tauri trying to come back at us. But we stopped that Alpha from getting anywhere near us. And we maintain our position. I don't think we actually gained any places off the start there. As we go through in towards Spoon now. We can see here that uh, we're trying to close up to the back of Stroll as we go into the Degners now. For the first time here uh, in this race. And we get caught up a little bit there as one of the uh, Alpha Tauris is battling away. We're trying to try and go down the inside of Stroll in towards the first deck. It doesn't work out though. But it's alright because in towards this head. Uh, all of the AIs just bunch up very, very nicely. And we go down the inside of Lance Stroll into the hairpin. And uh, we make our first pr proper overtake of the Grand Prix now. And we're up into P13. So that is then uh, a net gain of one place on the opening lap here at Suzuka. With Lewis Hamilton leading the pack. The two Mercedes is following on and then the two Renaults. Which is actually crucial. Because if those two Mercedes cars can stay in front of the Renaults. Uh, Ricardo doesn't have a very good chance of uh, closing the gap down. Uh, to taking the championship fight over to USA. So... Keep doing that, my friends, because I'll be kind of interested in that as we now go through in towards 130R. We've got a very nice slipstream here on Antonio Giovinazzi. We might just try and have to go for it here on Giovinazzi. We go for a super late lunge. That was, that was a bit, that, yeah, that was, I'm, I may have missed times my breaking point for that um, quite heavily, actually. I really actually wanted to go for it on Giovinazzi, but I ended up, well, going for two instead. But, on the plus side, I didn't smash into Magnussen, so, hey, it is what it is. Now, moving on, um, I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm going to have to make up some places, I'm really going to have to get the elbows out heavily, um, because, well, put it this way, I ain't got no pace. Because uh, we're speaking of pace, we're on to lap six of the Grand Prix, and I can't even get past Magnussen. I'm literally trying as hard as I can to push, but I'm not getting anywhere, as one of the yellow flags has come out for one of the Haas cars. So, it is Jack Aiken, then, that's out of this Grand Prix, so bad news, then for Aiken and it's an engine failure uh, for him here today as his engine blows into a plume of smoke and uh, he is out of the Grand Prix and he will be absolutely furious with that and will probably go and complain uh, to um, probably social media maybe. Uh, but as we go now in towards uh, the last uh, chicane here, lap 7 of the Grand Prix now, we're about 6 tenths of a second back off of K-Mag, now half a second, so good exit actually out of the last corner. We've run out of VRS though, but now we're going to get it back on the start finish straight here. This is our best shot to have a go at K-Mag and get ourselves into the point play and points play at paying positions if I can speak properly. And a nice move down the inside on Magnussen. This time around, a much more calmly executed overtaking move than the one before. But as we now go through in towards the first sector, we're up into P10 now and we can try and chase after the uh, guys in front. Speaking of the guys in front, yeah, I couldn't get after them. Could chase them down. Now lap 10 in the Grand Prix here. And, uh, we're still debating whether I went onto the uh, hard, to the medium compound tyres, but I preferably wanted to go to about lap 11, lap sorry, lap 12, lap 13 to do that. Uh, and I was about two laps shy. Uh, I could have tried it, but the tyres were overheating um, and we were losing too much time. Um, so despite the fact that I was already slow anyway, uh, with the tyres overheating, it was absolutely no point. So we're going to box now for the hard compound tyres. It's a two-second pit stop, quicker than what the racing point did uh, for um, Lance Stroll, or sorry, for Kevin Magnussen. 
Uh, and he goes onto the medium called Fantides, actually. So that's an interesting strategy choice there. But he's decided to opt for the mediums. Whereas I opted for hard tyres. So we've got a couple of drivers here. Uh, just sort of rejoining into the pack there, I believe. That is Norris, Sainz, Vettel and Leclerc. So McLaren and Ferrari are going at it here. But now it's time to see what we can do on the hard compound tyres. And uh, 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 to start things off, though, the hard tyres are feeling quite nice, actually. We had some pace in these stages of the race. So now we're going to have a little look at Lando Norris. And uh, this time around, I'm not going to go for it into the chicane. But we do get a very nice exit off of the chicane here. Now we've got a run on Lando. He's got that Renault power unit, which is, I believe, the best on the grid still. But we've got the uh, power of the Force Careers on our back. He jumps away from the slipstream of Carlos Sainz. And that, my friends, is your downfall. Around the outside of turn one there on Lando Norris. And uh, if you're going to jump in, if you're going to do anything... Uh, you know, I mean, he did the right thing defending the inside line, but he had the slipstream of Carlos Sainz, and as soon as he ducked out of that, it was a very simple overtake for us. So now, as you can see here, we're actually catching up to the back of Carlos Sainz now, and uh, we're going to go for it down the inside into the hairpin, nice and late on the brakes there, and that's the overtake done on Carlos there. And uh, yeah, but like I said, the car just completely came alive on these hard compound tyres. We still aren't probably as fast as the, uh, the likes of the Mercedes and the Renaults, but Comparing to where we were earlier in the Grand Prix, we're on the attack now in this race. And that to me is nice because I don't like to be really far behind and have no pace at all. I'd rather have the attack. But this is my proof here. So Ricardo crossed the start finish line on a 127.2. New fastest start of the race so far. He's behind both the Mercs actually, which is crucial as Hamilton still leads this Grand Prix. For me though, we crossed the line and we set a 128.2. Still a second shy of Daniel Ricciardo. But here is now our attack on Sebastian Vettel down towards turn one. A little bit of contact there, tire tire, as we go side by side, but we make the move stick on Sebastian Vettel. But crucially, Daniel Ricciardo is stuck behind both the Merc cars. If that stays that way, we will be world champion because Ricciardo has to gain places in this race in order uh, to win the championship. We set a new personal best lap here, getting much, much closer now to the back of Charles Leclerc as Sainz goes for it on Vettel behind and uh, Leclerc very, very close. Now, Ocon is also just right there. So we're actually gaining on the uh, the other Renault drivers. We now go through it towards 130R here against uh, Charles Leclerc and we break nice and late in towards the chicane now to try and set ourselves up for an attack on the straight now as we go through into the second phase of the chicane here. I think Ricardo's one of the minimap has just passed one of the Mercedes cars as we set a new personal best of a 28, uh, 27.8. And this time we're going to go to the outside line here of Leclerc. Very easy overtake. And that's us up into P6 now. Which means that we're going to get 8 points in this Grand Prix. So Ricardo needs to pretty much win this race. I don't think he can do it uh, with an 18 point P2. Because that's only 10 points. And I believe it, the gap was more than that. So... As we go on to lap 20 now, we've got a little bit wide there uh, through uh, Spoon Corner. And that's going to invite Charles Leclerc to have an attack back on us again. So here comes Charles now in the Ferrari. We're going to have to use everything we've got. I'm actually running out of fuel at this stage of the Grand Prix. I kind of need to save. Uh, but now Leclerc is going to have a look into 130. I we can cover that one off quite nicely because we just used a bit of our ERS there. In fact, well, pretty much all of our ERS for that allowance on that lap. But in towards the chicane now, we're comfortably clear of him at Ocon. Like I said, just one and a half seconds up the road, so we might have a shout at going after him, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I was able to just about build the gap between myself and Charles Leclerc, but Lewis Hamilton has won his first race for Force Career. It's a long time coming for him. He's had pole position in every single Grand Prix. Finally, he can win for our team, but for us, though, we're now going to come towards the start-finish line. Ocon sets a new fastest lap, but I don't care, because with all of that being set aside... We are the Formula One World Drivers Champion. World Champion. What a result. Enjoy it. It's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have all pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. The faces on our top three look so... So there we go then, guys, as Lewis Hamilton steps onto the top step of the podium for us here today. Daniel Ricciardo gave it his best shot. He actually did overtake both Mercedes cars in the end. 
but it wasn't enough to hold on in the championship battle, which does mean that we are going to wrap it up nice and early, actually. So it means that for the rest of the season, I can have some fun, chill and relax. And uh, still going to go for it, though, obviously. But, you know, at least I get to, you know, have that weight off the shoulders. And uh, as you can see, then, Hamilton wins the Grand Prix ahead of Ricardo, Perez, Bottas, uh, and then Ocon. We managed to recover into P6, which actually is a phenomenal result because the top three teams is Force Korea, Mercedes, and Renault. And to be able to finish in P6 with a car for me that just did not work around the circuit um, was a very good achievement for me personally and a track that I'm just so poor at compared to the AIs. But looking at the standings, you can see the gap is 105 points, uh, which means that no, if I DNF from all of the last races and Ricardo won them all, the gap would be five points. So Daniel had to win here today if I finished in P6. Um, so yeah, unfortunately he didn't. Um, so I believe I claimed eight points and he claimed that. So oh yeah, so the gap was 115 points to start with. So it meant that he had to outscore me by 16 points to let it go onwards. But unfortunately... First of all, congratulations. You must be oh, I thought she was actually going to say, like, you know, your World Drivers Champion or something like that. Yeah, we're, 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 we're mobbing Bob. But she didn't. Um, so, uh, did I struggle to get through the traffic today? Um, in terms of actually physically overtaking, no. Because I... Um, oh, she's actually going to congratulate me. Here she goes. How do I feel about being Formula 1 World Champion? I'm going to thank my team and all the support. That's a, that's, I'm, whoa, 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 whoa. You're trying to form some tension here, Claire, about Lewis Hamilton and myself. I'm not jealous. He's He's been on pole for every single Grand Prix uh, that he signed for us, and he has not been able um, to get uh, a race victory. So on that front, you can get lost. Uh, in terms of the podium finish as well, yeah, we'll be celebrating. We'll be, you know, partying hard. I wanted one where it'd be like we could party with everyone, but it's like, no, you have to pick one department to be happy with. So it's like, well... That's a bit annoying. Um, rivalry, though, we actually beat Valtteri Bottas 32 to 23. Um, so that's that rivalry done and dusted. Lewis Hamilton goes up to driver acclaim 18, or is pretty much close to 19 now. Uh, we're pretty much on the fringe, well, on the fringes of uh, team acclaim 15, uh, and then uh, dri sorry, driver acclaim 15, and then team acclaim. We're on to level 19 with a nice juicy payout of 1.75 million uh, in the bank, which is beautiful. Uh, and we actually took a couple of damage deductions in there, which is not a surprise. Probably got contact with Danny Kvyat, which probably took away those monies. But we're now up to 7.17.31 million. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and not only assign some activities, but we're also going to go ahead and, uh, I believe, purchase a new uh, facility uh, to upgrade. Unless I do it in the next episode. If so, spoiler alert, I don't even remember, to be honest. Um, so as you can see, we'll go for now and we're just assigning all of our activities uh, for the rest of the time. And uh, we're going to also save some components as well. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. First things first, though, I'm having a little bit of a mare here. We have now reached driver acclaim 15, which does mean that I can go ahead and now actually purchase all of the perks uh, and max them out to level 3. So now we've got massive uh, income in absolutely everything, uh, which is brilliant. Um, and now in terms of the R&D, we're going to go ahead and save uh, some more components. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save another two pieces for the engine here. All the minor upgrades is what I'm saving first, and then I'll move on to the majors afterwards. But um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Uh, if you have, feel free to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here as well. Uh, and uh, on that note, I think we are done and dusted, unless I make an upgrade without... Me even realizing, I think I do, I think it's from marketing, we go ahead and do an activities management to significantly increase the positive effects from team activities, which we do. So until then, guys, I will see you for the next episode, which is at the US Grand Prix. Take care all. Peace.